And now I have a little um, peak, is it? Yeah, peak brand of amplifier. Very early transistor one. This is taking the wooden case off, but it's a wooden cased one. KA200, all silicon transistor stereo amplifier. Um, definitely the 70s, if not even earlier, but I'd say it's from the 70s. Someone's added switches and 3.5 millimeter sockets and pots and stuff, so I'm not sure what they're meant to do. But this is a completely unknown unit. Again, the power cord was cut off, so I've just temporarily hooked one up. Uh, I'll power it on. We do have a power light. So that's something. This thing's actually so old, it's got output transformers while we're on the circuit board here, so that's a very old output stage with these transformers on it. Um, really didn't see many of them around, so it must be pretty old. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what it's, it's got TO220 case transistors by the look of it. Uh, even though this heatsink's actually cut out for the, the TO66 or whatever the small TO3 shaped metal case transistor is. I can hear the transformer humming, but that's about all we've got going at the moment. Now I've got to work out what's even the speaker connections. I've got left and right there, but whether that's for speakers. It's the 10 ohm, 10 watt resistors there, like they're trying to drop the level down. Yeah, this is going to be hard enough to even work out what is the actual output. But two suckers here, that goes via a pot. That goes via another pot. Oh, I don't have no idea what someone's done to this thing. But there's our output transformers, output transistors. So it's got to be some of these connections. Ah, uh, so we've got a green wire from these reds goes down to the headphone socket. Oh, here we go, blue and white. So we're going to have to use the headphone socket to work out where the original speakers went in this thing. So yeah, these red wires have all been added later. I might even get rid of all this rubbish so I can see what I'm doing. So we've got a yellow wire from this end of the board here and a, a filter cap there. So this is probably going to be DC isolated anyway. Uh, I would assume that would make a good ground on the case, or even the pots are usually a good ground. RCA socket, that'll also do us. The outer of, the, outer of those is a good ground. Oh, this looks like it is an actual ground. Yeah, we've got 12 volts there. Is it connected to that? Oh no, it's a separate pad. Yeah, we've got 9.6 volts, but that's probably just the charge on the cap. And that side doesn't have anything, so maybe not. 13 volts. Yeah, that's got 9 volts on it. That's not a good sign. But that, I would have thought, would be isolated from everything. That goes into a pot. Yeah, this is a real mess, this thing. I'll actually fire up the soldering iron and, and remove some of this wiring and see what happens. I've obviously turned the power off. We'll get rid of these red wires because they're going, oh, I don't know where. Pots and switches and all sorts of weird stuff. So we've just got a green wire here which comes via a probably a thousand mic or something. Yeah, thousand mic capacitor, electrolytic, 16 volt. That goes into one side of our headphone socket. This has just got one extra original, one extra wire on this side again is the basically the circuit board symmetrical each channel is the same but in a mirror image so we've got a thousand mic capacitor on this side a yellow wire going to the headphone socket looks like someone soldered something across the actual headphone socket here yeah, they have so someone's so we've got a white and blue wire going to the back panel would have been the original speakers yeah just a yellow and green coming in from the amp blue and white out and then we've got a couple of 470 ohm resistors which drop the volume for the headphones when they're switching in. But yeah, someone's bypassed at least one side, so it might have had a faulty socket here. So they, what have we disconnected this? I'm going to get rid of these potentiometers and stuff, I think. If I can easily do it. Uh, first, I've got to find some pliers.
Okay, so I've removed all this jumble of pots and switches and resistors and 3.5 millimeter sockets off the back of this amp now. I've uh, got power back on it. So I'll double check the um, outputs here. I've just got the output wires stuck out through the back end. There's a couple of earth wires as well. And yeah, we've got 12 volts on one steel ball. Look at it. Ooh, 12 volts on the other. So that's probably just the capacitors charged up. So maybe they did meant to have a voltage on them. It was just that one of them was actually disconnected before because I think we had zero or, or close to zero volts on one and voltage on the other. So I might have to put a dummy load on these rather than risking a set of speakers. You can put a fuse in line with your speakers, just a one amp or half amp or something, and then it'll probably blow that before burning out the speaker coil or doing any damage. But I've got a couple of uh, dummy loads here, big 100 watt dummy loads, so I might hook those up or at least one to one channel and see if that drops the voltage. And uh, that's a much safer way to do it. Um, nothing will It'll just get a bit hot, the dummy load, if there's a DC problem here, it may blow something in the amp. But might even, might be a reason to go even higher resistor. What are these ones? 10 ohms? I should have a 100 ohm somewhere. Yeah, 100 ohm resistor. Could actually put a 100 ohm 5 watt at a ground. Just temporarily and see if that drops the voltage. Probably a safer way to do it. seems to be discharging so that might be okay so sometimes you normally don't have capacitors on the output of these amps because this is an old one with uh, output transformers they're set up quite differently that seems to drop it down slowly to zero volts so that probably is just the caps charging up at initial start up of the amp. When the power's initially applied, it's yeah, starting to rise again. But um, yeah, we didn't, I don't know if it's even got fuses, didn't blow any fuses or anything like that. So that's a good sign this amp's probably okay. And it's probably safe to actually hook a speaker up to this thing. And see if it actually does anything. Uh, always got to be careful you don't short, yeah there we go, you don't short any of these wires to chassis because the chassis will be ground. If you short your outputs out, it probably doesn't matter with one of these old ones with a transformer and capacitor output, but with any of the newer amps, if you short the output to ground, you'll probably blow the output chip or transistors. Um, certainly if it's for any, anything other than a short connection, but yeah, some of them will blow instantly. Ooh, that's interesting. We've got a lot of noise on that channel. Now we've got that. Oh, that's why, because getting the balance going, we've got a lot of noise on both channels. Must be a tone control. Wow. Interesting. Oh, that's the power switch, not the input switch. Where's our inputs? That might have been the photo input or something. Yeah, maybe it had no input at all. I think this might actually be a working amplifier by the sound of that. And yeah, you don't want the these outputs to touch the other channel either, so keep them away from ground, keep them away from the other channel. Or you may cause some bone outputs, like again, like I say, because this isn't DC coupled. It probably won't matter a great deal. Now, what inputs have we got here? Phono, tuner, etc. See if I can get a CD player up and running. That old Sony doesn't seem to like that. It's been sitting in the garage for years. So if we got a tuner. Oh, right away, there we have it. Well, that seems to be running quite well. 
the ten of the left. Well, I was expecting something to be wrong with this thing, but it actually seems to run okay. <laughs> plugged in the tape record output so that's bypassing the switches basically and going back into the preamp section so it looks like we've only got tape no, yeah, tape tuner and phono that's all we've got I'll plug it into the phono even though it's way too high a level just to see if we've got sound there and finally that's pretty much what I expected even more distorted than I expected but at least we know that phono input's working Yep. Oh well, well, that wasn't a very exciting repair job. It actually seems to work fine. So, yeah. Goes to show all these old amps just keep going, even with all the stuff people have added to it over, over time. It was actually down the channel, I think, before, so. And the volume could do with a bit of a squirt too. Oops. Hmm, that's handy. Nothing wrong with that at all. Actually more powerful than I would have expected of a small amp. Probably only good for 10 watts a channel or something, but it actually sounds quite good. So yeah, don't really need to do much more than that with that other than put the cover back on or maybe change this change this speaker outlet here to back to the originals. Probably would have had the little screw terminal ones. Or well, must have I reckon with that sort of thing. Could have been the little spring mounted ones. But um, yeah, just a matter of fitting a new speaker outlet and she should be right. 